Hello, my little favorite creatures. Welcome, my little wombats. We have an amazing unveiler of mysteries and secrets. We have a very powerful new friend of mine, uh, Isaac. And he is a, a wholesome astrologer. And he's going to be unveiling what to do post eclipse and the energies of post eclipse, both in the United States and worldwide. So please tell us about uh, what's happening and all of these stuff. And everyone, if you enjoy uh, what he says, please book us book a session with him. Also comment what you are doing post eclipse and as well as how this our words hit you, how they resonate, how you enjoy them. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, please like and subscribe immediately to help support more amazing spiritual content to get out there. So Isaac, tell us about this. Um, this, yeah. Lovely, Ligar. Thank you for having me again. Yeah, really excited for this. So we did a really, we had a really cool chat about the eclipse on April 8th, which is the the total solar eclipse, also known as the Great American Eclipse. And we talked about how, I guess, the two of the main archetypes are Pluto and Chiron, which are going to be linked into that, and how that that combination is going to be bringing up, uh, unearthing a lot of a lot of hidden trauma, um, hurt, um, negative, potentially difficult, problematic feelings, which have been hidden away both personally and collectively. And so part of this eclipse will be really bring to the surface in a, in a necessary but potentially quite intense way these these feelings of hurt and trauma that have been lingering underneath for too long. And so it might be this this sort of start of April period around the eclipse, eclipse might be quite intense. Um, and so the lovely part about, you know, how our astrology seems to work is we find these archetypes that complement each other or that build on each other and so we have this amazing conjunction happening less than two weeks after the eclipse between jupiter and uranus which archetypally is one of the most positive um and auspicious combinations we can have jupiter is the great benefic it's about uh, hope. It's about optimism. It's about faith. It's about wealth. It's about dignity. Uh, and Uranus is, it's the first outer planet. Um, it's about freedom, liberation, spontaneity, sudden changes, sudden changes in outlook, sudden changes in worldviews, sudden changes in material circumstances. And so we can see straight away how bringing those two things together can be just this powerful launching pad to move away and to, and to finish that finish that transformation process, that plutonic transformation process of the eclipse, and to then just like launch launch forward into the next part of 2024. Um, because once we get past the eclipse, things look better, like astrologically wise. There's a lot of things going on now. We just had the the Pluto Mars conjunction, and we had a few pretty nasty world events coincide with with that conjunction. And we might have similar things in the collective going on in the lead up to the eclipse. And then afterwards, we suddenly have this amazing archetypal opportunity provided by particularly Jupiter. So the the most innermost planet, I would say, is where the main archetypal energy lies. And then the outer planet then acts to sort of moderate or influence what that inner planetary energy is. So this will be a Jupiterian conjunction. So fundamentally, it will about be about finding hope, finding optimism, finding faith, finding the 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 light about what the the path of light about where we as individuals and the collective go after that. So when I was thinking about archetypal combinations, the main thing that came to mind was sudden silver linings. So a lot of chaos internally, externally going on, difficult things being brought up to, to the surface, 
we're sort of realizing where we've been holding this quite um, problematic hurt, trauma inside of us. And then suddenly it comes out and it's very almost overwhelming. It's like, what, what do I do with this? And then suddenly Jupiter comes in and says, it's okay. This is where we're going. This is where we need to focus on. This is the path forward. It's going to be okay because there's always faith. There's always hope. There's always optimism. There's always silver linings. It doesn't matter what situation you find yourself in. It's always, there's always that underlying divinity and, um, and guidance from source, which is always there. And with Uranus there, it, it brings that about just out of nowhere. Suddenly it's there. As you think about Uranus, it was the first planet we discovered, which we can't see. So it was always there. And then suddenly someone looked at it with this new newfangled te uh, telescope. It's like, wow, there's a, a planet there. And it's, it's, it's suddenly there. And suddenly Uranus is there. And suddenly Uranus just makes itself manifest in the world because it was always there sort of underneath doing its thing. But then suddenly we, we, we see it express itself. And so I think 20th, 20th of April when Jupiter and Uranus can join, we'll, we'll experience that. We'll, we'll suddenly see what the path forward is towards a, um, a more spiritual, um, a wealthier, a more dignified collective is. And so we talked about last time holding archetypal keywords in mind which serve us and which serve the collective and just leaving aside the others because they, they you know to very quickly touch on potential negative or shadow sides of this jupiter uranus can be religious fanaticism like like uh, sudden um expressions of exaggerated faith um so Jupiter can be linked to things like um, cults, for example, that's the sort of worst thing. And then Uranus can just be um, a disruptive, disruptive events linked to that. But then if, if we flip that, if we take the positive spirituality of Jupiter, and then if we combine it with Uranus, which is, li which is liberation, like freedom, liberation, brotherhood, that's what Uranus is because it was discovered basically during this, this, this re uh, revolutionary time in, in human society. It's liberation from spiritual beliefs which don't serve us. It's liberation. It's spiritual li spiritually libera uh, liberating our soul, our spirit, from worldviews, from paradigms that don't serve us and which hold, which hold us back, which keep us in self-limiting spiritual beliefs or... Um, or, or worldviews. So this conjunction is an amazing time to liberate ourselves from beliefs that don't serve us and which hold us back. And so that's one of the main things I'll be keeping in mind as we come up to April 20th. And even if things do get a bit hectic at the end of March, start of April, I'll still have those things in mind because I know that that's where, where we're headed. That's the, that's the silver lining at the end of this is Jupiter suddenly coming in and saying, it, it's all good. It's all good. Is this for the whole world? Absolutely. Yeah, Beautiful. for sure. So, so we'll, 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 yeah, so the whole world will feel this because we'll, we'll all go through this, these archetypal energies together. But obviously, this conjunction will occur personally for each of us in different locations within our, our own birth chart. So we spoke about finding where the eclipse lies in, in, in our charts. It will also be good to find out where this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction will, will, will fall as well, which will, for most of us will be the next house after where the eclipse occurred. So for example, the solar eclipse will occur in my first house. So there'll be a, a quite a personal feeling to it. But Jupiter-Uranus will be in my second house. So I'm looking for opportunities to move forward and to have faith and optimism in terms of material wealth, in terms of assets, in terms yep. of secu uh, security and comfort. Yeah, so and everyone go and support him with that. Go and get on that wave and book book a session with him. Yeah, for sure. And even if you just, I'm open to just shoot me an, an email if you want to know more about how to work out where the celestial events will lie in your own chart. 
um, yeah, very, very, and I'm sure Lugal as well. We're very happy to sort of field these these sort of specific questions um, to sort of yeah, to sort of help people work work through these these periods and understand what it's going to mean to them personally. So yeah, for sure, I'm sure you can put in in details uh, for, for for this video about where they can contact um, both of us. So yeah, for sure. And and guys, you can feel he has all of this beautiful Leo energy. You can feel the positivity radiating off of him. Like when you go and support his work, it's going to you're going to absorb that energy. Um, just being with him for that hour, in addition to the valuable insights that he's going to provide. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, my little creatures, uh, for staying and watching this long. I really appreciate you being here and helping build this community through your likes, through your comments. Please tell us what uh, content we should cover, any questions uh, for Isaac. Uh, please uh, share this video, uh, get the word out there. Uh, if you feel called, donate or book a tarot session with me and let's find, let's uncover uh, different things in your life. Um, solutions and energies you need to work with. And if anyone needs it, I am going to be doing um, Medicine Buddha chanting for free here live uh, if anyone wants it. So thank you everyone who joined. Have a beautiful, beautiful day. Peace.